This video is designed to serve as a generator installation guide. The video does not replace, supersede, or modify the information contained in the owner's manual, technical manuals, or other documents shipped with the product. Generator installation presents a number of potential hazards, including the possibility of electric shock, fire, explosion, and exposure to hazardous chemicals and noxious fumes. We recommend that any installation be done by an authorized dealer or a licensed electrician familiar with all aspects of generator installation. If you choose to do the installation yourself, your warranty will not be affected as long as you follow the proper procedures and comply with all pertinent codes and regulations. Carefully read and follow all of the procedures and safety precautions detailed in the installation guide, technical manuals, and any other written documents that came with your equipment. If you do not completely understand any portion of the installation manual, technical manual, or other factory supplied documents, contact a factory authorized dealer for assistance. It's also essential that you read, fully understand, and comply with all relevant NEC, NFPA, and OSHA standards, as well as all federal, state, and local building and electric codes. Installing one of our generators with the distributed load center transfer switch isn't difficult and should only take about four to four and a half hours. Let's look at an installation from start to finish. The first thing you'll need to do is contact the local inspector or city hall to make sure you're aware of all federal, state, and local codes, rules, and regulations that could impact the installation. Make sure you have all required permits before starting the project. There are several factors that must be considered when selecting a location for the generator. Placing the generator as close as possible to the transfer switch and fuel supply will make installation easier and less costly. As with any generator, this unit must be installed in accordance with current NFPA 37 and NFPA 70 standards, as well as any other federal, state, and local codes for minimum distances from other structures. In addition, it's important to keep the area around the generator clear of combustible materials at all times. Make sure there will be adequate space for service and maintenance access. The location you choose should be on high ground so rising water won't reach the level of the generator. It's essential to have adequate and unobstructed airflow for proper generator operation and to avoid a buildup of carbon monoxide and potentially explosive gases around the generator. Make sure the location you choose doesn't have any buildings, trees, shrubs, or other obstructions that could restrict airflow. Be careful to place the unit so that inlet and outlet air vents won't become clogged by leaves, grass, snow, or other material that could restrict ventilation. Never place the generator inside the building or under any overhanging structure. And make sure exhaust fumes won't enter the building through eaves, windows, ventilation fans, or other air intake areas. After choosing the location, you'll need to prep the site. In most cases, you'll be using the composite mounting pad that came with your generator, but there are a few areas that require a poured concrete pad, so always check local codes. Following the instructions in the installation guide, dig a hole about five inches deep and a few inches longer and wider than the generator and cover the base with polyurethane film. Fill the area with pea gravel or crushed stone and make sure it's level before placing the generator. If you're using a hoist or other piece of equipment to lift the generator into place, use nylon lifting straps and connect them to the lifting eyes on each corner of the base frame. Before moving the generator, Make sure the lifting equipment you'll be using has sufficient capacity to safely handle the weight of the generator. Carefully inspect the generator for any shipping damage and remove the bolts holding the composite pad to the pallet. Carefully set the generator onto the prepared gravel surface, making sure the gravel bed extends a few inches beyond the composite pad all the way around. Check to make sure the generator is level within one half inch all around and adjust the gravel base if necessary. If you're using a concrete mounting pad, secure the base frame of the generator to the pad with appropriately sized masonry bolts or other fasteners specified by local code. 
connect an approved ground strap to the grounding lug on the base frame and to an approved earth ground or grounding rod as specified by local regulations. This is a good time to check the engine oil. If necessary, add enough of the recommended oil to bring the level up to the full mark on the dipstick. Be careful not to overfill the crankcase. The generator you'll be installing was configured for natural gas operation at the factory. Switching over to LP Vapor is a simple operation. On models with the V-twin engine, you simply flip the fuel selection switch from natural gas to LP. The location of the switch and the exact procedure might vary slightly from model to model, so always check your owner's manual. The process is different on models with a single-cylinder engine. If the battery is already installed, disconnect both cables. Disconnect the two wires from the solenoid on top of the regulator and remove the fuel hose from the outlet port. Now remove the brass fitting for the fuel hose in port 2 and the steel plug in port 1. Then. Install the brass fitting in port 1 and the steel plug in port 2. Use a quality pipe sealant on the threaded fittings to reduce the possibility of gas leaks. Replace the fuel hose and clamp and reconnect the wires to the solenoid. Finally, insert the plastic plug that came with the generator into the 3 quarter inch hole on the bottom of the air cleaner base. Both natural gas and LP vapor are highly volatile substances, so strict adherence to all safety procedures, codes, standards, and regulations is essential.